Vandalization of public utilities in major districts of the capital city has continued unabated despite efforts by the Federal Capital Territory Administration to curb this menace. Road signs, sinkhole covers, CCTV cameras and panels, bus stop stands and street light poles, among others, have vandalized across the city, causing the FCTA millions of naira and making life inconvenient for residents. The Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps has the mandate to provide security to public infrastructures. Now, how have they fared in the discharge of this responsibility? Hello and welcome to Dateline Abuja, I'm Ibrahim Adra. The Federal Capital Territory Command of the Nigeria Police is assuring residents of protection during the Yuletide. But residents believe more needs to be done by the police to ensure their safety. Details will come in the FCT in focus. In the interview segment, the FCT Command of the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps speaks on measures to be taken to protect critical infrastructure in the nation's capital. But let's begin as usual with stories that made the headline within the week in the nation's capital. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission has secured 1,070 convictions in 2019 alone. And that's according to the acting chairman of the EFCC, Mr. Ibrahim Magu. He said this at a summit to mark the United Nations Day on Anti-Corruption. From January 2019, to November ending 2019, we are still counting, it's yet, the year is yet to end. We have recorded 1,070 convictions. Politically exposed persons, former governors, captains of industries, oil subsidy merchants, and scores of players in the private sector. A former military chief and civil servant have also been convicted as well as many illegal oil bunkers in the Niger Delta. On recoveries, we have recorded unprecedented successes, especially in solar asset recovery through conviction base and non-base fee for features. The cumulative value of recoveries by the Commission runs into hundreds of billions of naira, millions of dollars, and other foreign currencies. A coalition of civil society organizations in Abuja is giving the federal government 14-day ultimatum to release all illegal detainees by the Department of State Services, as well as other security agencies. The coalition gave the ultimatum at a media briefing, where they also asked President Mohamed Buhari to hold a national broadcast and address citizens on the direction of his administration. Two key issues of concern to us, namely, number one, attack on our judiciary, and number two, attack on free speech and pattern of silencing dissent. We demand the following. Number one, President Muhammad Buhari to show accountability as president and commander-in-chief and address the nation on his commitment to the rule of law and human rights. Number two, the release of all illegally detained persons by the Department of Secret Service as revealed by Amnesty, Premium Times, and Punch newspapers in recent months. Number three, that the government obey all pending court orders. Number four, an investigation of the officers who violated protocol and the circumstances leading to Omoyele Shuwore's second arrest. And lastly, the unconditional release of Omoyele Shuwore per his bail terms. If these five demands are not honored within 14 days, 14 days, we call on patriots across Nigeria to join us as we occupy the National Human Rights Commission. Offices across the country, as it is legally mandated to protect rights, and it also reports to the presidency. Tomorrow, December 10th, the world will celebrate Human Rights Day. It would also be marked in Nigeria as we review the crackdown on the freedom of the press, 
proposed bills to curb dissent and a general environment of shrinking civic space, of which the recent actions of our security agencies are just an example. So the principal in the office... The body of senior advocates of Nigeria and the Nigeria Bar Association is demanding a probe into the invasion of the Federal High Court in Abuja by operatives of the Department of State Services. In a bid to arrest the convener of the hashtag revolution now, Mr. Omoyele Shore. We urge the courts to demonstrate that they are not toothless in sanctioning persons who flagrantly disobey and flout court orders. Our courts are not entirely helpless in this regard. There are remedies in our rules and statutes. Such persons, for example, must not have continued audience before the courts that they so flagrantly denigrate. They need to be denied audience before any and all courts during the pendency of their contemptuous conduct. They need to know that disobedience of court orders can be and is costly. This requires the collaboration and cooperation of all courts in the land, led by our apex courts and my lord, the Chief Justice of Nigeria. We must collectively promote and protect the rule of law by ensuring obedience and compliance with court orders. Meanwhile, the National Assembly is set to investigate the court invasion by officials of the Department of State Services. While the Senate mandated its Committee on Judiciary, Human Rights and Legal Matters to investigate the matter and report back next week Thursday, the House of Representatives is mandating its Committee on National Security, Judiciary and Human Rights to also investigate the matter and report back to the House in two weeks. The federal government is set to investigate the invasion of the Federal High Court Abuja by operatives of the Department of State Service. The Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Mr. Abubakar Malami, said this during the visit to the premises of the court. In the meantime, the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Mr. Abubakar Malami, is taking over the case file of the convener of the hashtag revolution now, Mr. Omoe Leshore. According to a statement from the media aid to the minister, the order is part of efforts to ensure speedy dispensation of justice. Vice President Professor Emil Shibajo is asking traditional rulers across the country to leverage on their influence at the grassroots level to help stop drug abuse in their various domains. He made the plea while speaking at the 11th General Assembly of the National Council of Traditional Rulers of Nigeria. Indeed, your royal majesties possess a moral authority that arguably transcends the legitimacy conferred on political leaders by electoral cycles. It is this moral authority that we respectfully urge you to exercise against drug abuse in your domains. It is the combined effect of the corrective and coercive powers of state agencies and actors and the moral authority of the throne that we believe can deal a death blow to this terrible scourge that today destroys the lives of thousands of our young persons. We are, Your Majesties, as you have heard from uh, General Mawa, faced with a major drug abuse and addiction problem. The 2018 National Drug Use Survey indicates that there are 14.3 million drug users between the ages of 15 and 64. In effect, young Nigerians that should be in the prime of their lives have been ravaged by the plague of substance addiction. In addition, Nigeria's drug use prevalence is almost three times above the global prevalence rate. These figures are stark and their implications dire. Substance addiction poses a clear and present danger to public health and public safety. However, I invite you all to consider the complexity of drug abuse as a crime. The federal government has mandated the Office of the Accountant General to issue a daily Treasury Statement of Government Transactions. The Treasury Statement is expected to encompass all inflow and outflow of transactions of all ministries, departments and agencies. The Minister of State for Niger Delta Affairs, Senator Tayo Alashua Dura, gave the directive at the launch of the federal government's open treasury portal. 
The transparency policy approved by the Federal Executive Council requires the following. One, the Accountant General of the Federation must publish a daily treasury statement which will provide information about what came into the national post and what went out every single day. This week's Federal Executive Council meeting ended with an approval for the construction of two roads in Bochi and Kano states for the Ministry of Works worth over 40 billion naira. The purchase of 15 Hilux vehicles for the National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control worth 307.5 million naira and a portal for the Minister of Finance to monitor waivers in various sectors of the economy. In the process of these exemptions, for a couple of years we realized that government was actually ceding quite a significant amount of revenue through this process. And because the process was largely paper-based, we, uh, we got approval today to automate this process to enhance efficiency, to block possible leakages, and also to reduce the amount of time that the ministry uh, takes to uh, review this exemption request and provide the necessary approvals. This uh, um, um, portal will be managed by both the Ministry of Finance as well as the Nigerian Customs Service. The ve vehicle identification number, that is the VIN database, will be available for any user to access to find out information on, on, uh, on vehicles. And our own part on the IDEC component will be able to see how much uh, uh, waivers have been granted to which sectors and also track the performance of those waivers and reduce the costs uh, subsequently for government. Thank you for staying with us. The FCT Commissioner of Police has been listing what Abuja residents should do to ensure that the Yuletide is free of crime, while the command is putting in place measures to ensure safety during the period. The last four months of the year, popularly called the Ember Months, are notorious for rising cases of criminality in the nation's capital. While security presence is heightened in various neighborhoods across the city, residents believe measures should be taken to ensure that the trend is stopped. They are trying, but it's not all that effective because the population of the, the, the police or the army is, very, is not up to the population of the whole country or the people living in F, F City. So they cannot see all the places, but they are still trying, but there are still lapses. But we, we, we still hear of, of robbery here and there. When I was climbing that step, I saw two men coming down. Coming one from my back, one from my... I was thinking that maybe they are policemen because they wear black this thing. So before, you know, these people tried to struggle my bag that I was holding with me. But thank God that day, I, they did not take anything from me. Before I know, people now came uh, around, they now ran away. Just inside the city here, this uh, we finance quarters. Honestly, FCT is not safe for now. Because like me, I'm a commuter. I commute daily to work. So I encounter this one chance and all those people on the highway. It's really, and I hear a lot of people say their experiences about them so it's relatively insecure it's not safe but the police believe security is everybody's job while listing what residents should do to protect themselves during the yuletide every festivity when it because uh, before it comes we used to sit down and draw what we call operation order in that operation order we map of strategies that will curtail any uh, expected crime or an offense that will be committed. So we draw our uh, operation order, we put all our machineries in motion to checkmate the evildoers or the hoodlums that are intending to uh, rob innocent citizens. Everybody should be conscious of security of himself. 
any suspicious movement, you should raise alarm. Giving us timely information, we will work on that uh, timely information and respond to the, uh, 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 to the place where crime is about to, commit, to be committed. In the meantime, the Senate wants adequate allocation to be made for security in the 2020 budget of the Federal Capital Territory Administration. This is to stem the rising tide of insecurity in the capital city.